Hi families, this is Mrs. Bauer, and I just wanted to show you um, my expectations for children when they're writing. They have, um, in their homework pack, they have spaces to write sentences, and then we do writing in class. And a lot of my friends are struggling with writing. They're struggling, they don't, maybe don't know all the letter sounds, or they don't know how to approach writing, so they're very, very frustrated. So I wanna show you what I'm doing in class so that when you're at home, you will know how to help them or how to get them to write sentences and what my expectation is. So this morning, um, we were practicing our sight words and um, there was a sight word on the board. We talked about whether it was a snap or trap word. So you might hear that at home. A snap word is something that play, it plays fair. It looks right and it sounds, like, sounds right. So can is a snap word, C-A-N, can, that all plays fair. So it's a snap, a word like walk is a trap word because the A-L makes that weird like aw sound in the middle. So they don't know how to spell that or um, A-L usually, <coughs> excuse me, it sounds like L. So that word is a trap. So we talk about that so that every time that they see walk, um, hopefully it will be more familiar to them because we've discussed it. Then we write our sight words in a sentence. So um, one of our sight words was the word two today, and they wrote, I will have two slices of pizza. Now for a lot of my friends, that is very overwhelming. So let me show you what I do when kids are expected to write. If they say, Ms. Bauer, I don't know how to spell, I don't tell them how to spell. That is not gonna teach them anything. So we repeat the sentence over and over. I will have two slices of pizza. I will have two slices of pizza. I will have two slices of pizza. So that way it is in their brain. Then they get out their pencils and I say, what's the first word? They say, I, most students know how to write it. So I'm gonna just write it because most kids do, some kids don't. Um, some kids, they don't know the letter I, so they might not write anything. So I by itself is always capital and there it is. The next word, um, is I will. So I have them reread it. I will. We write a word. We make a space. Will. Let's pretend they don't know how to spell will. The first thing I ask them to do is clap out the syllables, which for some kids, this step alone is hard, but that's okay. We must practice it. So they have to try. So some kids will say, well, Ill. that's making a mouth and it's not clapping out the syllables. So will is one syllable, will. Then I tell them to make a mountain with the syllable. So they would go, will. Some kids, that is still hard, but they have to try. Then I tell them to write down the sounds they hear. Now my hope is with will, they heard three sounds. So I hope that I see at least three letters. Now for some kids, they're not even there yet and they're not writing three letters, they're writing one. That's okay, they don't get yelled at, they don't get punished, they don't get made fun of, they don't get called names. If they know one sound, they know the one sound and write it down. If they know two sounds, write it down. So whatever they know, that's what I want them to do. Now. Some of the more savvy kids can raise their hand and say, Miss Bauer, what's the I sound in will if they're not sure what that middle sound is? Or like walk if we have a weird sound that they just don't know how to spell it. They're allowed to ask that. That I will tell them. But I won't tell them how to write the whole thing. So for some kids, after they clap out will and then they make the mountain, what ill, they might just put a W. That's the only thing they know. But they at least tried and they are realizing that sound or words are made up of sounds. I want them to have that realization that words are made up of sounds and the sounds they hear, they can write down. Not all my friends know all the letters and sounds. I know that. It will get better as they learn more letters and sounds, which we will drill and practice in small groups throughout the year. So if they can do all three sounds, well, Ill, then they do it. Some kids might put this. Maybe they confuse an E and an I. That's another common misconception. Also, they might not know there's two L's and they might put that. It's not, a second grader should know how to spell will, but if they don't, they don't, I don't make fun of them. I don't yell at them. I don't tease them. 
I just tell them to write what they know. It teaches me what they do know and don't know. So even on their homework, I want them to go through this process. So what was the sentence? I will have two slices of pizza. I will have two slices of pizza. So let's say they write that, or maybe they just write the W. So then they go back and they read it and they tell me the next word. I will have. A lot. There are second graders who know how to spell the sight word have. If they don't, step one is to clap it out. Clap out the syllable. That is a one syllable word. Have. Then they make a mountain with that syllable. Have. Have. Now that in itself is hard for some kids. They don't hear the separate sounds and they have to practice. So they are getting frustrated at school. But I still want them try because by trying, they're going to learn. So have has three sounds, but you're like, but it has four letters, Ms. Bauer. I know that. So have them write the sounds they hear. Have. So they might just write that. They might just write an H. They might just write an A. They might just write an A and a V. They might have any combination of that. Now, the kids that really know how to spell have, I tell them to write it fast. So this doesn't look right. Some words don't play fair. Remember the snapper trap thing? Have doesn't play fair because if it were a long vowel, then we would put, if it were a long A, then we would put a magic E at the end. This word does not play fair. If they know how to make it look right, they can go ahead and do it and spell it right. But if they don't and they write this, then I know... I have learned as our teacher that they know the sounds of the word have. So they don't know how it looks, but they do know how it sounds. So I am learning about your children. If they just have the first sound, then I know that they know the sound of H. Or they're good at hearing the first sounds. Don't worry, they'll eventually get the last sound. Usually the first and the last sounds are the easiest ones to hear. The ones in the middle are usually the most tricky. So if they're just writing one sound, write one sound. It's not grade level. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not grade level. They should know how to write the word have, but if they don't, let's get down what they do know and build off of that knowledge. So I will have two. Now two was given to them on the board. That was a sight word. We talked about it. It was literally on the board. They could copy it. I will have two. I'm going to go back and read the sentence again. I will have two slices. Now, slices is not a one-syllable word. It's two syllables. So I'll show you how I expect them to write slices. Slices. So the first clap was sly. Sly. Now, that was really three sounds, but it was two parts of the mountain. The bottom of the mountain really had two sounds. Now, those blends can be super tricky. If your kids aren't hearing all the sounds and words, they probably aren't hearing blends yet. That will come later. So some kids might have went, I, and maybe they heard the L, and maybe they heard the S. Maybe they heard the SL. I don't know, but whatever they heard, that's what they write. Maybe they heard nothing. Most kids know the sound of S. That one usually comes easier. It's one of the first ones they learn. So they might put that. So I. So if they put that, that's fine. If they did it, if they put something else, that's fine too, whatever they heard. But I do want to see that finger space. I will have two slices. We're not done with slices because that was two syllable. Slice says. So then they heard the says, which we know is not going to play fair. Some kids know CE makes the S sound. Other kids don't. So, but the second part was sly says. So they heard s Now, if they really heard those sounds, this is what they're going to put. S-E-Z. This is called inventive spelling, and it is very normal in second grade. And you'll even see it in third grade. It's super normal in kindergarten and first grade, but it's still very normal in second grade. Slices. Now, if they know that this doesn't look right and they know how to spell slices, first off, good on them. So we know slices is spelled with a C-E, which they will learn probably near the middle of the year. So at that point, then I would hope to see some C-E's, but maybe I still won't. So if they're just putting this, if they're spelling slices like that, it's absolutely fine. If they have an S-L-I, 
and not the rest. That tells me they don't hear both parts. If they only have an S and nothing else, that's telling me that they're hearing at least the first sound and that we have to maybe work on the last sound and then work on some of those middle sounds. So everything they do actually does speak to me and tells me information as their teacher. I know that a lot of kids are struggling with writing and reading, but if they don't try, they're never going to get anywhere. If I sit there and spell for them or if they just copy off of a board, that's just learning how to copy. Um, that's not learning how to think about the sounds that they do know and writing those down. So we're not done with the sentence yet. I will have two slices of, clap it out, of. Some kids can write it fast. If they can write it fast and they know how to spell it, go be on, go do it. Like, I don't want them to do this if they know of is O-F. But if they don't know of, I expect to see, this word does not play fair. I do expect to see of like this. That would be inventive spelling once again, a U and a V, because that's what of sounds like. As they learn more words, and as we talk about snap or trap words, hopefully they'll learn how to spell words like of, and they'll see it a lot in print. They'll read that word often, and they'll start to just memorize those really, um, those trap words that don't play fair. But if they just have that, I'm very cool with it. If they just have the V, because that's all they heard, that tells me something too. Maybe they don't know the sound of U, uh, uh, uh. If they put an O, that tells me they know what it looks like. So everything they do is telling me something about what they do know or what they don't know or both. I, what was this? I will have two slices of pizza. So pizza is another word that has two syllables. Pizza. Pizza. P pizza. That's very weird. It doesn't play fair. I would expect them to put a P. E, and then maybe a T and an S. Pizza. Now some kids know what pizza looks like because they love pizza. They see pizza boxes. They maybe saw the word somewhere and that's fine. If they're writing it right, I don't want to mess that up. They can write it right. But if they can't, then they need to go through the procedure of listening for themselves, the sounds and writing down what they hear. Pizza. Oh, I hear a U at the end, that second syllable. Uh, so if they wrote pizza like this, I would not yell at them. I would not um, make them feel bad. I would not tell them they're dumb and stupid. I would be, I would say, hey, you heard that P in pizza. <clears throat> when it's all over, I will show them what the words actually look like, which may be um, frustrating for some kids who tried really hard and they didn't spell it right. But then I always praise them for the sounds that they did know. Now, every um, sentence ends with some kind of punctuation, so I expect to see that. And so that's how writing goes in my class. And we've been having lots of tears and lots of frustration because they don't want to do that full procedure. It's long. It took a long time for me to write that. But if I don't make them do it, they're going to struggle in third grade. In third grade, you're expected to write in multiple paragraphs, not just even one word or one sentence. Even in second grade, by the end of this module that we're on, they are going to be writing a book. It's going to be about 10 to 15 sentences long. So I'm not going to go around and write down everything for all the children. They have to try, and that's how you learn. Sometimes it's through the struggle and the frustration that you learn. So sometimes they'll start crying when they say, Ms. Bauer, how do you spell it? I'm like, mm -mm, what's your first step? Did you clap it out? Did you make a mountain? Um, or if I tell them the sentence and I literally hear nothing, there's crickets, I don't hear any clapping, I don't hear any mountains, I do fuss at that. I'm like, were you thinking I was just going to write it for you? Like, you better start writing. You better clap out that word. You better make a mountain. You better even hear one let low not you better. If you hear even one letter, please write that down. So that's the procedure for writing. Please have them do that at home so it's less frustrating at school. Um, if they cry, it's okay. They'll love me in third grade when they're writers. They don't have to love me right now, but I think they do, hopefully. So I'm being kind of mean as they say, but it's because I want what's best for them. 
and I want them to be um, well educated. So don't believe her at all. I'm a nice person. <laughs> Just after school, I'm nice. And I do love them all. I wouldn't be so mean if I wasn't. So um, I just wanted to give you a writing lesson. Have a great day, everyone. Um, hug your children. They'll probably need one when they get home. And um, I'll see them tomorrow. <laughs>